Hello, I'm Asde Mashiri. Welcome to the program. We start in the Middle East. The aid organization World Central Kitchen, that's based in the US, says it's immediately suspending its operations in Gaza after an airstrike killed seven of its workers. The organization says those killed are from Australia, Poland, the United Kingdom, a dual citizen of the US and Canada, as well as a Palestinian. In a statement, it said the convoy was hit as it was leaving the Deir al-Bala warehouse after unloading aid and that it had coordinated movements with the IDF. It said, quote, this is not only an attack against WCK, this is an attack on humanitarian organizations showing up in the most dire of situations where food is being used as a weapon of war. This is unforgivable. Of course, Israel denies that it is using food as a weapon of war. Now, earlier, Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has confirmed one Australian woman, Zomi Francom, was among those killed. Graham Satchel has this report. The bodies of aid workers being taken to a hospital in central Gaza. They worked for the charity World Central Kitchen. They were travelling in armoured cars branded with their charity logo when they were hit by an Israeli airstrike. The charity says seven were killed from all corners of the world. Britain, Poland, Australia, America, Canada and Palestine. Hey, this is Zomi and Chef Olivier. We're at the Dirba Laugh Kitchen. The smiling face of Australian Zomi Frankham, one of those who lost their lives. She'd been working in Gaza helping to organise the supply and preparation of food. The Australian government is demanding answers. The truth is that, that this is beyond, uh, beyond any reasonable circumstance. That someone going about providing aid and humanitarian assistance uh, should lose their life. This is a video produced by the charity. It is one of the biggest providers of food aid in Gaza and has delivered more than 42 million meals since last October. In a statement, the Israeli military said it was conducting a review at the highest level to understand the circumstances of what it called a tragic incident. But the deaths have been condemned by the founder of the charity, Jose Andres. He said... The Israeli government needs to stop this indiscriminate killing. It needs to stop restricting humanitarian aid, stop killing civilians and aid workers, and stop using food as a weapon. In the Syrian capital, Damascus, the clear-up has started after an Israeli airstrike on Iran's consulate. Two senior commanders of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard were killed in the attack. It is the clearest sign yet that this conflict is escalating. The Iranian ambassador in Damascus hinted at retaliation. Definitely the Zionist regime knows better than anyone that such crimes and violating international law will have its response in an appropriate time. The deaths of foreign aid workers in Gaza will put international pressure on Israel. Governments around the world will want assurances that charities and their staff can operate safely. Graham Satchel, BBC News. Well, let's look closer at that attack in Damascus, that strike in Damascus, and speak to Dr. Alam Saleh, senior lecturer in politics and international relations on Iran and the Middle East at the Australian National University. Uh, thank you for your time. Now, Mohammad Reza Zahedi was uh, the senior commander, the main senior commander there that was, uh, that was apparently killed in that attack. Could you put that into context for us, how high profile a figure he is in Iran? Well, uh, the, uh, General Zahedi uh, was involved in, in Iran's activities in, in the region since 1980s. Uh, the, he's the, the, the top uh, Revolutionary Guard commander uh, uh, responsible for coordination between Iranian-backed groups, militias in Syria and Lebanon. Um, and, uh, uh, of course, his deputy also uh, was killed uh, amongst five other uh, Revolutionary Guard members. Uh, this is perhaps the, 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 to the top assassination since uh, assassination of General Qasem Soleimani in Baghdad in 20, early 2020. Uh, 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 what, what makes this uh, uh, incident even more important is that has happened in Iranian consulate, which is considered as Iran's soil 
in Damascus. Uh, therefore, is a violation of international law. However, it seems also that Tel Aviv is well determined to drag Iran into a war, and in doing so, they um, uh, they, they they hope to achieve the following uh, objectives. One is to involve uh, United States in the region uh, and to confront Iran, perhaps directly, and also to unite the fragmented political and societal um, um, uh, spectrum inside the country, the, the division between Prime Minister Netanyahu and uh, and the pe and people, we see, we know that the, the right. demonstrations have been uh, ongoing, uh, and also to to divert the attention from what's going on in Gaza. Well, Dr. Saleh, to that point, uh, and given the fact that there are all these fears of an escalation of this war, what options do you think Iran would consider? Uh, I would say uh, Iran knows very well that uh, Tel Aviv wants to drag Iran into war. Uh, and they benefit from this uh, act if happens. Uh, therefore, they won't directly uh, retaliate, uh, uh, and they, if they will do it through their proxies in Iraq, in, in Lebanon, or in Yemen. Uh, the, the direct uh, uh, kind of conflict between Iran and Israel is, it would be catastrophic. Uh, and therefore, Iran knows very well that, uh, um, that this should not happen. And, and we and know Dr. that there Saleh, are channels that... Dr. Say, no. apologies. Uh, do you mean then when you talk about its proxies, and also you mentioned Lebanon there, that Hezbollah could be a vehicle in some way for a response? Yes, of course, Hezbollah is the extension of Iran's security doctrine in the region, and it, it's actually designated to, 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 to defend Iran and uh, rather than any other places. Therefore, um, uh, it depends. I mean, the National Security Council in Iran uh, last night have made the decision. We don't know what the decision might be, but uh, we may know that... Uh, uh, that Hezbollah would be involved in, in such retaliation uh, in one way or another soon. Uh, the, the, the question is that the, 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 there are channels that, that uh, Tehran and Washington are, are, are in touch. Uh, uh, it seems that the United States has been blamed by Tehran, uh, uh, and uh, the United States also uh, have uh, declared that they have not been uh, uh, involved in such attack, and and there the, there are hopes that United States and Iran may solve this problem somehow uh, behind the curtains. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Anam Saleh, for that perspective. Now, you, you'll remember at the beginning of this program, we started with the news that the World Central Kitchen, an aid organization, has said that it's suspending all its operations immediately in Gaza. And that's after they said an airstrike has killed seven of their aid workers. Now, let's go live to Jerusalem and our Middle East correspondent, Yolande Nell, for more. Uh, Yolande, what's the latest on that? Quite a lot of detail given in the statement from World Central Kitchen saying that it's seven aid workers uh, that have been killed. They're uh, British, Australian, Polish, a US and Canadian national, dual national uh, and Palestinians as well. Uh, killed in an apparent Israeli airstrike in Deir al which is in the center of the Gaza Strip. And uh, the US charity uh, saying that um, these workers and its team were in a convoy of three cars, uh, two of them armored. and. They they had been coordinating their movements with the Israeli military. They were leaving uh, a warehouse in that city, having just unloaded something like 100 tons of food aid that had just been brought in by sea. Of course, this is a charity that's been very much involved um, in opening up the new maritime route between Cyprus and Gaza uh, and bringing food in that way. Um, now, the CEO of the organization, Erin Gore, has said this is an attack on humanitarian organizations showing up in the most dire of situations where food is being used as a weapon of war. This is unforgivable. The Israeli military has not confirmed this strike. It said it's carrying out an in-depth examination at the highest levels to understand the circumstances of what it calls a tragic incident. And your land, what position does this put Israel's allies in? Allies like the United States, the United Kingdom, uh, allies who potentially have nationals who've been killed in this strike? 
Well, we've already had the Australian Prime Minister coming out um, and demanding that those responsible for this be held accountable and saying that um, Australia has spoken to the Israeli government as a result of one of its citizens um, being killed. Uh, this is really something that will have further repercussions for other aid work um, happening in Gaza and it, it involves so many countries because of the different nationalities of the aid workers involved. It's a US charity. We've also had the National Security Council um, in the US coming out and, and talking about this as being a tragic incident and saying that it too is looking for answers.